While it is often said that the Declaration of Independence was signed on the 4th of July, 1776, this isn't actually correct. In fact, nobody signed it on the 4th. This is contrary to Thomas Jefferson's, John Adams's, and Benjamin Franklin's account of events. On top of their accounts, the public congressional record of events backs their story. So how do we know that it didn't happen this way? To begin with, the secret journals of Congress that were eventually made public in 1821 paint a different story. They contain an entry stating on August 2nd, the Declaration of Independence being engrossed and compared at the table was signed by the members. Now, if this was the only evidence, one might lean towards a typo in the journal and believing the aforementioned three individuals and public congressional record. However, one of the other signers of the declaration, Thomas McKean, denied the 4th of July signing date and backed it up by illustrating a glaring flaw in Jefferson's, Adams's, and Franklin's argument. Namely, that most of the signers were not members of Congress on July the 4th and thus wouldn't have been there to sign it. This made it literally impossible. As McKean said in 1796, no person signed it on that day, nor for many days after. Further evidence comes from the interesting fact that the parchment version of the Declaration of Independence that is on display and kept at the United States National Archives wasn't actually written until July the 19th, this being a copy of the approved text that was announced to the world on July the 4th, with about 150 to 200 copies being made on paper and distributed on that date, 26 of which are around today, thus predating what is now generally thought of by most as the original. This little tidbit also came from the Secret Journals of Congress, which has an entry on July the 19th stating, Resolves that the declaration passed on the 4th be fairly engrossed on parchment with the title and style of the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, and that the same, when engrossed, be signed by every member of Congress. So, in the end, this signed document probably would have been copied by Timothy Matlock, Jefferson's clerk, rather than penned by Jefferson himself, and certainly couldn't have been signed on the 4th of July. It's also interesting to note that John Adams thought that July the 2nd, not July the 4th, would be celebrated in the future in the United States. On July the 3rd, 1776, in a letter to his wife Abigail, Adams notes, the second day of July, 1776, will be the most memorable epoch in the history of America. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other, from this time forward forevermore. So why did he think July the 2nd would be Independence Day, and how did July the 4th end up getting the nod instead? Well, that's because July the 2nd is when the Second Continental Congress voted to approve a resolution of independence. Although nobody voted on or signed the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July, that was the date the Declaration was announced to the world and why it was ultimately chosen as Independence Day. Another little talked about matter was how Britain initially responded to the announcement. Rather than give a formal response to the declaration, the British instead secretly commissioned John Lind to write a response entitled, Answer to the Declaration of the American Congress. One of the main thrusts of the response was criticizing one of the colonists' statements and the blatant hypocrisy that it demonstrated. It stated, All men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All the while, the same drafters of the Declaration and the colonists were slave owners, denying their slaves' rights, and certainly rarely granting liberty or the opportunity for their slaves to pursue their own happiness. This criticism was obviously valid, and had been something that had been discussed heatedly by the Continental Congress. The original declaration even included a section concerning slavery, blaming the British for their part in the original slave trade, and listing this as a reason the colonists no longer wanted to be a part of Great Britain. From this and other evidence, it is generally thought that many in the Congress would have liked to see the end of slavery with the birth of the nation. They were quite aware of the hypocrisy of all men are created equal and the injustice of slavery. However, this would have devastated certain of the colonies economically, which could have crippled the burgeoning nation. Thus, tragically, the issue was pushed aside for a later generation to address. 
In any event, following the announcement of the declaration and the eventual parchment version being signed, the document itself was neglected after the revolution. Even early celebrations of Independence Day ignored the original statement of that independence. It was the act that was thought important not the text. Indeed, even while drafting the Constitution, the document itself wasn't used as a source in terms of ideals for how it should be drawn up. Even the French Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen in 1789 borrowed from George Mason's Declaration of Rights instead of the Declaration of Independence's view on this, even though Jefferson himself was in Paris and was consulted on the French Declaration. It wasn't until political parties formed that anyone really thought anything of the actual text. Once that happened, Jefferson's supporters used the fact that he was the primary author to their political advantage. This created heated back and forth over the document's authorship and eventually resulted in it being more prominently thought of in terms of importance of the text. However, even then, it wasn't until the 1850s that the document itself became important for more than historical reasons. Once again, this centered around the all men are created equal paragraph. Now being used to proclaim workers, women's, and once again, slaves' rights. The latter usage of the text was taken up by Abraham Lincoln in 1854. He felt that the Founding Fathers expected that slavery would be a dying institution in the United States. He also felt that the Declaration of Independence was one of the founding documents of the nation and not just a simple statement declaring secession from Britain. He used this view frequently in his arguments against slavery. Nearly 80 years ago, we began by declaring that all men are created equal, but now, from that beginning, we have run down to the other declaration that for some men to enslave others is a sacred right of self-government. Our Republican robe is soiled and trailed in the dust. Let us repurify it. Let us re-adopt the Declaration of Independence and with it the practices and policy which harmonize with it. If we do this, we shall not only have saved the Union, but we shall have saved it as to make and keep it forever worthy of the saving." Lincoln's view that the Declaration was one of the founding documents in terms of defining the nation eventually became the nation's view, even though it was not predominantly so before him. This was an extremely important development in America's history in terms of interpreting the Constitution. Many things in the Constitution were previously seen one way, but in light of the text in the Declaration of Independence, now being considered important, were seen in another way. And now for a bonus fact. Legend has it that Thomas Jefferson was chosen to write the Declaration of Independence over the much more qualified and skilled writer Ben Franklin, because Franklin was known to put very subtle satire in just about everything he wrote, and quite often nobody but he was smart enough to comprehend it until much later. Knowing this document would likely be examined closely by the nations of the world at the time, it is claimed they chose to avoid the issue by having the much less gifted writer Jefferson write it instead, with Franklin and three others to help Jefferson draft it. The drafters were known as the Committee of Five, consisting of John Adams, Roger Sherman, Ben Franklin, Robert Livingston, and Thomas Jefferson. So the question is, well, is this true? Well, we personally could find no primary document to support this, so only have the word of Ormond Seavey, editor of Oxford's edition of Ben Franklin's autobiography, saying that it's true. Unfortunately, Seavey, while seemingly an extremely credible source, does not say where he got this information. Whatever the case, ironically, given the whole point was to declare independence from Britain, Jefferson and the other four delegates charged with drafting the Declaration of Independence leaned heavily on the English Declaration of Rights as a model for their own declaration. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Just before you go, I'd like to say that people have long been requesting that we do kids educational content uh, in addition to the content that we do on this channel. So for people with young kids, we're starting with toddler education videos and we'll work up through elementary school over time. This channel is not run and hosted by me, but rather by someone who is actually qualified to do this. They've got 12 years of teaching experience specializing in kindergarten and first grade education. They've also got a bachelor in science and mathematics and education and a master of arts degree in education, along with an education reading endorsement for grades K-12. Not sure what K-12 means, being a Brit, but well, those are some serious qualifications, so this host is way better at this than me. New videos are released roughly weekly. It's called Kids Learning Quest. You will find a link to it below. And as always, thank you for watching.